Not to do considerations here. <coughs> so this is the, uh, the Monday after the first Sunday after Pentecost. The first Sunday is always suppressed. And uh, the first Sunday after Pentecost, Mass is always set on the Monday or Tuesday, whatever the first available ferial day is. And uh, so they do here in, in Denver. But a few considerations on this the epistle, this very first Sunday after Pentecost, what moves the church during the 2,000 years of its journey from Pentecost to the rearrival of our Lord Jesus Christ? And when you read here the epistle, taken from the first epistle of St. John, chapter 4. Dearly beloved, God is charity. By this hath the charity of God appeared toward us, because God hath sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we may live by him. In this is charity, not as though we had loved God, but because he hath first loved us, and sent his Son to be a propitiation for our sins. My dearest, if God hath, hath so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No man hath seen God at any time. If we love one another, God abideth in us, and his charity is perfected in us. In this we know, that we abide in him, and he in us, because he hath given us of his Spirit. And, and we have seen, and do justify, that the Father hath sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God abideth in him, and he in God. And we have known and have believed in the charity which God hath to us. God is charity, and he, hath, he that abideth in charity abideth in God, and God in him. In this is the charity of God, perfected with us, that we may have confidence in the day of judgment. Because, as, as he is, we also are in the world. Fear is not in charity. But perfect charity casteth out fear, because fear hath pain, and he that feareth is not perfected in charity. Let us therefore love God, because God first hath loved us. If any man say, I love God, and hateth his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he seeth, how can he love God whom he seeth not? And this commandment we have from God, that he who loveth God loveth also his neighbor. And we'll read there only the, only the epistle. We'll see considerations. So only the Father, so only goes to men. It's in the epistle of the Mass today that we have the coat of arms of Archbishop Marcel Lefebvre, the founder of our society of St. Pius X, Credidimus in Caritate, that we have believed in charity. And we notice here what St. John says what Deus Caritas is, God is charity. God is charity. But he says that uh, he is violent charity in God. <clears throat> Created most in caritate, that we have believed in charity. Right? And he says it, the other important consideration, that we have believed in charity. Notice that he says it in the past tense. Credidimus in caritate. One day, before St. Paul's death, he spoke to all of his children, all of us, and he said, I have run the race, I have fought the fight, and there waits for me a crown. There are some things that are in the present. We have three things, the present, the past, the present, and the future. But the present is something that depends upon the past. The only reason why I am uh, 49 years old today is because I was 48 last year. <laughs> I am only able to be an adult because I once was a child and grew up to an adult and didn't die in the journey from childhood to an adult. That when a seed is a little seed, it has to go through a journey. And one day the seed stands and he is a great oak and he is a great flower and he is a, a, a great plant of some kind. A mustard seed turns into a great tree. And when the mustard seed looks back upon its life and recognizes Today it is able to hold up the birds of the air, whereas normal bushes are not able to do that. But this bush is strong enough to be able to do it. And yet, and yet it was the smallest of seeds. And that seed of faith grew. Now there are some things that cannot be known. There are some things that cannot be believed, that cannot be understood. 
unless we have gone through a certain journey, unless we have experienced certain things. We have to have had certain experiences, and we have to be able to say, credidimus caritati. Imagine St. John in his age saying these words, we have believed in charity. St. Paul could say those same words, we have believed in charity. Now what happened when St. Paul believed in charity? He was on his way to bring Christ to the ends of the earth. And the Romans tried to stop him. And the Jews tried to stop him. And all of the other Gentiles tried to stop him. And he had perils from his own brethren. And perils from his own nation. His own fellow ministers tried to stop him. He was blocked on every single journey step of the way. A night and a day he spent in the sea. He had so many trials and tribulations. But what did he experience? Behold the trials of the just man, it says in the Old Testament, in the books of wisdom. Behold the trials of the just man, but from every one of them the Lord hath saved him. Now why is it that the trials of the just man, he makes it through? And the great example of our times, Tobias, that Tobias saw those that were dead, and he believed in charity. What does that mean to believe in charity? Tobias saw that there is a man that is dead upon the side of the road. It is illegal to bury them. Ran into an illegal burial case already earlier this year because of the stupid coronavirus. When we tried to fight to get someone buried, they were finally able to be buried. It took over a month to bury the person, to bury the young, to bury the lady. They were illegal to bury because of this stupid crisis. And because they were going to burn her up, they were going to burn her in, in ashes, take examples of this crisis, this non-crisis, to try to burn everyone up, to burn all the bodies, to incinerate them and not allow them to be buried. In the end, she was able to be buried. But in any case, what happened? There was a dead body in the streets, and he believed in charity. What does that mean? He believed that it was more important that this body of his fellow Jew, who is illegal to be buried, be buried in the ground with proper honor and dignity, because it is a temple of the Holy Ghost that lies in the streets. Therefore he got up from his table, and he went out to that dead body, and he picked up that dead body and he buried it. And there was a problem, though. That is, anyone who tried to bury will be put to death. And so we have to decide, what do we believe in? And when St. John stood up and he says, Credidimus, in the past tense, we have believed. This is going to be the question that is made to everyone when they die. What did you believe in, in the past tense? What did you believe in during the five years of your life? What did you believe in the 50 years of your life? What did you believe in the 100 years of your life? What did you believe in the 21 years of your life? What did you believe in? Because what you believe in, what you did believe in in the past tense is that which moved you to act, and it carried you from one place to another. And the young bishop, uh, Archbishop Lefebvre, decided to put upon his coat of arms what he believed in. Credidimus in caritate. We have believed in charity. That's what made him travel to Africa in order to bring souls to Christ, and he did it, and to solve their troubles. They didn't have a bridge, he built a bridge. They didn't have electricity, he made them electricity. They didn't have homes, he built them homes. They didn't have priests, he made them seminaries. They didn't have faith, he taught them the faith. Whatever it is they didn't have, he brought to them, physical and spiritual. And he believed that God would provide. He believed that these things could be done, because it is true that love, true love, does conquer all. Now who believes in these things? Everyone says that they believe in charity. Everyone says that they believe in love. But when the battle comes, they prove that they do believe in love. Oh, yes, they do. They believe in the love of themselves. And they believe in the love of their own survival. And they believe in the love of their own comfort. That's what they believe in. And so when the battle comes, they flee because they love jobs. Because jobs give them money. And hence Jesus Christ says, such a one is a hireling. But our Lord Jesus Christ does not want hirelings in his kingdom. He wants lovers. You've got two options. Either you are working for money to make a living and take care of yourself, and this equals the love of self, or you are working for love, 
And if you get paid, fine. And if you don't get paid, fine. If they're going to praise you and give you wreaths of, of glory, fine. And if they're going to skin you alive and chop your head off and execute you, fine. Because these things, either the punishments or the glory, mean nothing to those that love. For a man that loves has only in his mind the object of his love. And if there is an obstacle between him and the object of his love, if his love is great, the obstacle is in the most grave danger. He will destroy that obstacle, he will overcome that obstacle, he will pass through that obstacle, or he will die on the way. But there is no obstacle that will stop love. There is nothing that can stop that which is true love. Therefore, St. Paul could say at the end of his days, as St. John says in his epistle, in the name of all saints, in the name of all those that love God, credidimus caritate. I believed in charity. That's what made me get in that boat and go across the sea. And there came a storm, and 110 people were in the water. And he believed in charity, and they spent all night in the water, and the ship was destroyed. And in the morning came, all 100 came to the shore, and not one of those that was in that boat with St. Paul, not one drowned. Not one. What do we believe in? There was a small example of it in our times, in 2005, when the Catholic pilot Tully was landing his airplane on the, on the Hudson. A very small example for our times. He took his plane off from LaGuardia Airport, ran into a flock of geese. The engines went out. He turned the plane towards the Hudson, having no ability to turn it around properly and land it on the runway. And he said, I only had time for one Hail Mary. He only had time for one Hail Mary. So he said one Hail Mary. And then the plane landed on the Hudson. And not one person was hurt. And not one person got wet. And everyone was saved 100% healthy because he believed in a Hail Mary when the time of danger came. Now we cannot plan what we're going to do. We cannot plan what we're going to say when the difficulties come. When difficulties come our way, whatever we have believed, whatever is already in our hearts, whatever is already inside, that comes out. I cannot go and put more inside. What, our Lord, what, did our Lord, what did the wise women tell? The wise virgins, what did they say to the foolish ones? If we give you of our oil, then when the bridegroom comes, there may be no oil for you or for us. Therefore, go to those that sell the oil and buy oil yourself. For we must keep the oil that is in us. And this is the oil of prayer and the oil of charity. The oil that must always burn. And we don't know how late Christ will come. We don't know what day he will come. We don't know the day of the victory of Mary. We don't know. But we must believe in charity. We must believe in that, that, that charity doth conquer all and last through all difficulties. Last through all trials and tribulations. We have to believe in it. And if we do, we'll discover at the end of the night there's still oil in our lamps. There will always be oil in our lamps. The oil that was put in the lamp of, by Judas Maccabeus, there was only enough oil for one day. And he said, we will burn the sacrifice. We will not wait. We will pray the oil lasts eight days. And the oil lasted the eight days. The oil lasted because of the charity that was in the heart of Judas Maccabeus, because of the faith that was in the heart of Judas Maccabeus. And therefore, that oil lasted he was able to defeat the enemies of God. He was able to purify the temple. He was able to bring back the sacrifice because the heart drove him. And how did it drive him? St. Paul speaks, St. John speaks about what he believed in. Credimus in caritate. We have believed in charity, the charity which is Christ. What happened about this charity? God the Son, God the Father said, My only begotten Son, go to earth and there be spit upon. There be mocked and scourged and crowned with thorns and crucified. There be denied. I command you to go. Why? Why do such a foolish thing? Because of love. And because of the love that was in the Father and the love that was in the Son and the love that is the Holy Ghost. 
Because of that love, the Son became man, and he spent his time on this earth. And how did he spend it? He said, it is my delight to be with the sons of men. They're not very handsome. They're not very good. They do so many wicked things. But I love them. And I'm going to change them into that, from that which is evil to that which is good. From that which hates to that which is loves. And hence we have the beautiful uh, Veni Sancti Spiritus. We read every day during the week, last week, of Pentecost. That he will, he will bend that which, is, which, is, which, is, which cannot be bent. He will straighten that which is crooked. He will warm that which is cold. Now if we have Jesus Christ inside of us, if we have the faith inside of us, then this must come out in our walking through this world. There must be a way in which we have believed in, the, in our faith. This is the only faith. Because what does St. John say also in the beginning of his epistle? It is this that conquers the world. Our faith. Now the world today must be conquered. And our faith conquers it. And when we travel with our faith of the world, we discover that we believe in charity. And when we travel with our faith through the world, and we put that faith into practice, and we look back, we discover that we have believed in charity, and then, because of this belief that has been inside of us, this belief that must be carried to the ends of the earth in every single age, including our own wicked age, this belief that makes us love our neighbors who are unlovable. To love our neighbors that are lovable, this the pagans do. And Christ said, the pagans do that. I did not come here to teach you, twelve apostles, how to love your friends, how to love those who do good to you, how to love those that are your helpers and your friends and your family and your neighbors that are good to you. I came here to teach you what love really is, to love the nothingness and emptiness of this modern, of the, of the, <laughs> that is in these modern people, the love that would be taken away from them. For God loved nothing, and when he poured his love into nothing, he created a beautiful, magnificent world. And then he loved the sinner. And when he poured his love into the sinner, he wiped away sin and filled it with divine charity and divine faith. And this love must be inside of us. He wants that love to be participated in by us. So we must travel with this divine love inside of us, and we have to go from place to place carrying our Lord Jesus Christ. And what do we believe in? What did we believe in? Credidimus caritate. And when Vatican II came, a missionary bishop, with all these thousands of Catholic bishops throughout the world, saw that the world has turned away from God. And the world doesn't love and know him anymore. And that souls are calling for the divine love. And they're calling for the divine truth. And they're calling for the true mass. And they're calling for the true faith. And the, and the, and the Pope is saying, you can't give that faith to them. You can't give that mass to them. And the bishop, they're saying, you can't give that faith to them. You can't give that mass to them. And what did he believe in? Did he believe in the powers of this wickedness that happened and that turned into the structure of the church? You know, he believed in charity, and therefore he was driven to bring Christ to the ends of the earth. And right away in the very beginning, in 1970, when the society was founded, immediately he went to every place of the earth to encourage priests throughout the world, stay with the tradition, stay with the faith, stay with the mass, to encourage others to come back to the tradition, to bring people back to the truth, to spread the truth throughout the entire world. And the charity moves him throughout the entire earth. Now this charity must always remain in our holy church, and it is growing cold. This charity is not found in the 2020. It must be found in our times. It must be inside of us. We have to carry this charity to the next generation. We must, we must, we must say that we have believed in charity. And one of the points of this coronavirus non-crisis, it is not a real crisis. It is a test. All it is is a test. In these last two and a half, three months now, there has been a test. What is it that's inside of your heart? What is it that's most important to you? What is it that drives you? Is it your own love of your own self? Or is it the love of God that one desires to be spread throughout every word in the universe, everyone in the world? What love motivates? What is it that makes us do what we do? What have we believed in? And the majority of souls have believed in the government and have believed in themselves and have believed in whatever is going to be a benefit unto their own city. And remember, they forget what happened to Judas, as it says in sacred scripture. Judas committed suicide, 
And then what does it say in the sacred scripture? And he returned to his own place. His own place is hell. His own place is despair. His own place is to hang himself by the halter. That is his own place. And who wants to go to their own place and protect their own place? Meanwhile, twelve apostles came to Lord Jesus Christ and they said to him, and Judas was one of them in the beginning, Master, where dost thou dwell? Where do you live? We want to go to your place. Now there are two places to go to. The place that is Jesus Christ's and the place that is our own place. And Judas went to his own place. He went to a place of despair. He went to a place of suicide. And right now the whole world is committing suicide and the whole world is going into a place of despair. Whereas what happened with the other 11 apostles, they wanted to go to our Lord Jesus Christ's place and they are now in that place, which is the kingdom of heaven, where they see God the Father and God the Son and God the Holy Ghost face to face. And they want this place to be the place not only themselves, but the place of all others they meet in earth. And they believe in the charity that brought, made God the Father command the Son to come to the earth. And they believe in the charity that made the Son walk this earth. And they believe in the charity that is the Holy Ghost, that is the wind that blows throughout this entire world to warm it with its charity. And the charity of divine truth, the charity of the Holy Roman Catholic Church and the Catholic faith, the charity that will feel all wounds and all troubles and all problems, spiritual and physical, and every problem of society, both from the top of society to the very bottom, everything is healed only by that divine love. And we must believe in it and not believe in other things. Now what happens when this charity enters into the heart of a soul? St. John says, There is no fear in charity, for charity casteth out fear. And so the man rises up, and he sees the enemy, and there are thousands of them, and there is a world, and they are to be conquered for Christ, and there are only a few of us. He has no fear, but has belief, that the charity of Christ will defeat all of their lies, defeat all of their hatred, defeat all of their manners, different manners of deceit, defeat all of their weapons, all of their GPS systems, all of their modern crap. It shall all be defeated by the power of faith in charity. Because what is it that conquers the world of those fools? Our faith. How does our faith conquer it? Because we have believed in charity. This cannot be and will never be defeated. So he goes a day and a night in the sea, but no one drowned. Thrice he was stoned, but his bones were not broken, and he was not seriously harmed. He was thrown in prison, but he was still able to write his epistles that are now sent throughout the entire world, converting souls all the last 2,000 years. They chopped his head off, and it bounced three times, did St. Paul. And yet, the, the, and yet that, 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 the, the charity of that head has gone through this entire world, and he is the apostle of all Gentiles. And St. John believed in charity, and he died of love. Love is what was the cause of his death. And he is the apostle of charity that teaches that which charity is in his holy gospel that flies above the other gospels. We have believed in charity. Some will die in charity as martyrs, as St. Paul did. Others will die in charity because of the power of the divine love that has finished itself, its work inside of them, as St. John did. But all those that believe in charity, like the good thief, who in the last moments of his life believed in charity, and he spoke the words of charity, and he conquered the sin that was in his own heart, he destroyed Caiaphas, and he destroyed the enemies of God, and he was the glory of Good Friday that confessed the truth before men, so that even on Good Friday, when Christ was alone, even on that day, the truth was spoken aloud, and the truth was heard by the crowd. And so it shall be until the ending of times. When the Antichrist comes, the truth shall not be completely wiped out. It shall still be spoken. It shall still be heard by the crowds. We must decide... Do we believe in charity? Have we believed in charity? Is it that which motivates us? And let's pray that it is. For our faith, motivated by charity, conquers the world. And this is what must be in our times, 
and in all times to the end of the world, we must be the vehicles carrying the faith that was given to us and the charity that must be inside of us until the ending of times. Closing, I bless you all. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.